So the International Skin Tear Panel looked at classification. Now we have classification for pressure ulcers, don't we? We don't have a classification for cavity wounds, but we do have classification for skin tear. We've got a type one, type two, type three. Depending on the severity or the type, then we may be able to look after and manage that wound ourselves, or we may have to refer on potentially to plastics. Now, again, there's a little tip here. If you ever do sustain, or a patient of yours sustains some damage, a blunt trauma, and you start to get the beginnings of a hematoma, don't wait to put the compression on, put a little bit of compression, about eight millimeters of compression. So I'm talking a wool and two crepes. Give a gentle squeeze and it'll reduce the risk of that breaking down and then becoming a long-standing problem. Hence why I got my class ones on very quickly as soon as I did my blunt trauma. So there's a pathway that we should follow. And again, the treatment plan will vary. So we should also consider, like I said, what's the root cause? Where's the location? Are there any signs of infection? Are we able to identify what the infection signs are? So is there a malodor? Is there an increase in uh, pain? Is there an increase in exudate? Uh, is there any inflammation? All the things that we start to put our jigsaw parts together. Look at the wound size. Do I need to take uh, further advice from the TVN? Is there a pathway in place? Look at the exudate level. Is it serious? What is the viscosity like? Is it thick custard like? Is it indicating how much protein's coming out? If there's bleeding, I need to stop it, don't I? Usually 10 minutes will stop any bleed point unless it's an artery that's it's in the ceiling. We're in trouble then, but stop by pressure. Consider the peri-wound skin, vital to get any, if we've got tissue loss, we need a good peri-wound skin. I say to my lad who used to be a competitive swimmer, always look back down at the board that you're taking off from before you go off down there. He used to say, why dad, make sure because you don't want any wet maceration, well maceration, you don't want any wet at your foot, same as maceration, because all that will happen, you'll dive in, you'll belly flop, your other colleagues will be down the pool. It's exactly the same with the skin. If we don't look after that surround, the epithelial tissue won't be able to swim across the granulation. It'll belly flop in. We've got a static wound. Feel and palpate, which we don't tend to do anymore for warmth. Sniff, using the things we were given, like the Bisto kid. Is there any malodor? What does it indicate? Um, I, went, I saw a wound the other day, a poor young lady had uh, aerosol burned herself and um, she had some pseudomonas there. Well, that pseudomonas smell, we can all recognise, can't we? It's almost like that's part of hospitals in the old days. And pain, what is the pain like? Um, pain is a really good indicator for many, many things. Type of ulceration if it was a lower limb wound. Just very quickly, I'm going to give you a quick question. If you get pain in your wound and it's lower limb, is it venous or, or, or is it arterial? I'll give you a clue. Venous, because you get the pain in it because it's superficial, nerve endings are exposed, and you get that fluid rush, so it's in the wound, so it's venous. If it's in your calf, it's calf pain, not the wound, it's arterial, because you're not getting the blood supply down there, so you're getting the cramp. 